at Eyewitness News at 5 starts right now. Right now, it's New York's number one news with Bill Ritter and Sade veteran and meteorologist Lee Goldberg with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Now, Eyewitness News at 5. More gun insanity in New York City. This time, a man shot in the head inside a popular music studio in Midtown Manhattan. Tonight, he's fighting for his life. Two people charged in the grisly case of body parts scattered across Long Island get released again without bail. What the judge said today. And the New Jersey Department of Education now says it will not step into reversing a con controversial buzzer beater. A call by the refs, a downright bad and wrong call that cost a high school team a shot at the state championship. And good evening, everyone, at 5 o'clock. I'm Bill Ritter. I'm Sam for Bookman, and today for Sade, we're going to begin with the weather this evening. The sun made a comeback. Sadly, though, it's not going to last. Very sadly, Chief Meteorologist Lee Goldberg tracking the rain for this weekend. Lee? Yeah, from sun to soaked again. This is our third soaker of the week, but it is the final in this string of rainmakers, and it'll be similar to last week that could cause minor or coastal flooding during the times of high tide Saturday into midday Sunday. And this is a newly issued coastal flood watch. So once again, we could have some minor flooding. Sun's just about to go behind the clouds here. We're at 53 degrees. Been a beautiful day, but that's the leading edge of our storm system. You get some rain right here, and that's definitely a connection to some Gulf moisture here. So it can come down heavy, even a rumble of thunder tomorrow evening. The first raindrops are likely to be here by late morning or midday tomorrow. Gets a little steadier during the afternoon, but this is really ramping up tomorrow evening and into maybe the wee hours of uh, Sunday morning. I think the heaviest probably around 10 o'clock at night, but by one or two in the morning, it's off to the north and east, and then we get into blustery conditions on Sunday. So light rain tomorrow afternoon. The brunt is from 7 o'clock tomorrow night to 1 a.m. Sunday, up to an inch and a half of rain. Big winds behind the storm Sunday and Monday. The potential for trees knocked down and some power outages, and gusty rain and snow showers on Sunday as well. But for tonight, just clouding over and pretty comfortable in the Clouding over and pretty comfortable in the 40s before that rain comes in. After these rain chances, we're dry much of next week and temperatures start to spike starting Tuesday. Your 7-day AccuWeather the forecast in just a few minutes. Bill and Sandra? All right. Thank you very much, Lee. Now at 5, the search for the gunman who opened fire at a popular music studio in Midtown, leaving one man fighting for his life. The victim has a history with police. Investigators now look into whether he may have been targeted. Eyewitness News reporter Darla Miles live this evening at the scene with the very latest. Starla? Sandra, the NYPD is working to identify three men seen leaving the studio at the time of the shooting going north on 8th Avenue. I'm right here on 8th Avenue between West 39th and West 38th Street. The studio is right behind me. But I can tell you inside of that studio, uh, while the NYPD has not identified these suspects by name, there are cameras all over that studio, and they are going through each bit of surveillance video, and it's likely they'll find these suspects pretty soon. We just looked through the window. It's going to be a mess today. Okay. Nobody wants to go in. Nobody wants to go in there. All day Friday, NYPD officers spotted going in and out of this 12-story building, the unmarked door leading to a famous music rehearsal studio space where a 26-year-old man was shot in the head. There was something about this place that's kind of creepy to me. I never wanted to come in here. You know, I'm always in, uh, in, in Jersey, my Jersey studio. So when I heard that this morning, I wasn't surprised. Surveillance video shows more than a dozen NYPD officers racing to the front door on 8th Avenue near West 39th just after 12.30 a.m., responding to three 911 calls. And on the 11th floor, the 26-year-old shooting victim who was quickly brought downstairs to a waiting ambulance and taken to Bellevue Hospital. It's a busy community, um, 8th Avenue. You know, things happen over here a lot. A lot of uh, underground artists and from all over the place come to the studio because it's well known. Um, so we, we heard that, yeah, we, it's tragic. According to its website, the music building opened in 1979 and has 69 available studios to rent. Open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Every band in there is playing loud. And there's graffiti everywhere, and the bathrooms really stink. Yeah. And so people kind of rock and rollers like it. It's, it's a fun place. But no fun today at this creative space turned crime scene. I like him. I find the place very safe. I, I, I don't done cre My daughter rehearses it, so I don't find it a problem. 
The 26-year-old victim in critical condition now at Bellevue Hospital. Meanwhile, the NYPD again still trying to identify those suspects by name. Three men seen walking north on 8th Avenue just after 1230 last night. But at this point, they have not recovered a gun and they have not identified a motive. Reporting live in Midtown, Darla Miles, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Disturbing story, Darla. Thank you for that. You know, seeing soldiers at busy New York City subway stations like Penn Station, not unheard of in New York City. But a recent plan by New York Governor Hochul to increase subway safety has increased their presence exponentially. While some riders welcomed the increased security, bag checks, increased NYPD patrols, and hundreds of National Guard members have some computer commuters feeling a bit uneasy these days. The NYPD's chief of patrol, concerned about militarizing the subways, he says the subways are, his words, not a war zone. The police department, the DAs, the judges, the elected officials, if we all do our job as it relates to a very small segment of the population of the city, the recidivists, if we focus on that, we're not having this conversation. Crime comes way down. By the way, more than a thousand additional state officers have been dispatched to the subways. Two of the four people released without bail after being charged in connection with body parts found across Long Island were back in court today. A judge released Alexis Nieves and Jeffrey Mac McKay, or Mackey rather, once again, but ordered them to continue to wear electronic monitoring devices. Meanwhile, Governor Hochul softened her criticism of the district attorney's handling of this case. Eyewitness News reporter Janice Yu was in the courtroom. The two are expected back in court on March 19th. Now, Jeffrey Mackey's attorney says he and Alexis Nieves are in a relationship, and the two did not answer any of our questions as they were leaving the courthouse earlier today. Can you tell us anything about what happened inside the courtroom today? Is there anything you want to, to say on your own behalf? Please leave me alone. Alexis Nieves and Jeffrey Mackey left the Suffolk County Courthouse Friday afternoon following a brief appearance in front of a judge, both still wearing their ankle monitors. Can the GPS monitoring now be indefinite? Well, we waived it so they keep it on. So until I pull a waiver or until there's an indictment, uh, the GPS will remain. Nieves and Mackey are two of the four charged with felony counts of hindering prosecution, concealing a human corpse, and tampering with physical evidence. Authorities say body parts belonging to a man and a woman in their 50s were found scattered throughout Long Island. The case continuing to draw criticism as all charges the four defendants face are not bail eligible. The mental capability, the depravity, it takes to, to mutilate a human being, a dead corpse, and then to be out in the community again is just simply outrageous. Long Island Republican senators and assemblymen announced the new legislation today that would make concealing or mutilating a human corpse a bail eligible crime, pushing back on Governor County Hochul's comments that the Suffolk County DA should have filed higher level charges. She chose to malign our law enforcement and our great district attorney, Ray Tierney. It's just unconscionable. Though during an interview on Friday morning, Governor Hochul seemingly softened her criticism. They're doing their job, and I respect that. But uh, the bail laws, I, I thought were gone too far in the wrong direction. I'm bringing them back and we're going to continue to make sure that we keep people safe. The other two defendants, Stephen Brown and Amanda Wallace, are expected to be in court on Monday. In Babylon, Jane Asu, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Bribery and fraud charges have been reinstated against former New York Lieutenant Governor Brian Benjamin. Today, a federal appeals court overturned a 2022 ruling that threw those charges out. Prosecutors say Benjamin used his office to get a $50,000 grant for a nonprofit run by a developer in exchange for thousands of dollars in illegal campaign contributions. But the developer, who was due to be a key witness, died last month. Benjamin is also facing charges for allegedly falsifying campaign donation forms and providing false information on a background check. New developments tonight in that horrible call by the refs in a critical basketball playoff game between two high school teams in New Jersey. Manasquan, which won, and Camden, which lost but was declared the winner. The clock clearly shows time remaining when Manasquan made that last shot. But the refs blew the call, and now education officials refusing to change the refs' mistakes, despite the clear evidence. So what's the lesson in all this for all these school kids? 
New Jersey reporter Tony Yates live outside Manasquan High School with the very latest in this controversy. Tony. Well, Bill, I can tell you the lesson learned for one New Jersey lawmaker is that this can never, ever happen again. Can you imagine any other uh, New Jersey high school basketball team going through something like this? And today, uh, these kids lost rulings uh, when they should be playing in that game tomorrow. I really wish that they had that opportunity to go to, and I just feel so sorry for them. The attorney for the Manasquan School District busy at the last minute, throwing legal Hail Marys today, trying to win a decision that would rectify the bad call from the referees Tuesday night that took this buzzer beater win away from Manasquan and gave it to Camden. Asked to make a decision on what to do, New Jersey's Department of Education ruled, even if the official's decision was not correct, under the clear and explicit bylaws of the NJSIAA, it is not reviewable. The attorney for the school district going even farther, filing an appeal in court after the DOE's decision. The game that Manasquan won't play is tomorrow. The superintendent admitting he could not win favorable resolution for the team. That's now behind us. We did everything we could for our athletes. The atmosphere here at the high school today? Somber, very somber, um, disappointed, and just lost. Honestly, just lost. No one can really believe it. Everyone's, it's still circulating around. Assemblyman Sean Keene is drawing up legislation to try to make sure this never happens again. In big games, in the um, championship brackets, the tournaments, they would have to have replay. And it would be a little bit of an investment, but what I've been told, I learned a lot about it the last few days, is that the schools that host these big games, they have the technology. Riley Eldridge is a bookkeeper for the team. That fateful Tuesday night game, still recorded in her book, a win for Manasquan. I sent one of our coaches a picture of it because it actually says, at the bottom I put final score and I put 47 to 46 and then I got up and started cheering and just never had time to change it after that because it was a shock and I don't think anyone expected it to be reversed like it was, but my total in my book adds up to 47, so yeah. They'll be talking about this for a very long time here at this high school. By the way, Manasquan girls basketball team made it to the championships. They play tomorrow at 2 o'clock at Rutgers. For now, we're live here in Manasquan. Tony Gates, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. What All right. story. Yeah, mm. it certainly is. Thank you very much, Tony. Coming up on Eyewitness News at 5 on this Friday night, a 15-year-old boy walking to a bus stop in Yonkers hit by a car. He's in critical condition. Could the driver face charges? Also ahead... It's causing an enormous amount of anxiety and stress day to day. A couple from Brooklyn fighting to get New York City to pay for their parked car that was totaled during an NYPD high-speed pursuit. Investigative reporter Kristen Thorne tracking down the city chief financial officer for answers. That's coming up. I'm Sandy Kenyon on Oscar's Red Carpet. Coming up, my candid and funny conversation with the host of Sunday Night's Oscar show, Jimmy Kimmel. That's next. Jimmy Kimmel hosts the Oscars. Jimmy Kimmel hosts the Oscars. Live Sunday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ABC. Sponsored locally by Blue Forge Alliance. Ford together. It's a new day. One where our shared values propel us towards a more secure future. Through AUKUS, a partnership built upon cutting-edge American, Australian, and British technology art, next-generation submarines, and build something stronger together, securing decades of peace and prosperity for America and our allies. We are going forward and staying forward together. Together. This is Jimmy Butler, and this is Jimmy Butler's butler. Jimmy Butler loves... This is Jimmy Butler, and this is Jimmy Butler's butler. Jimmy Butler, sure, he doesn't realize Hulu Plus Live TV is like cable, only better. Buckets! You get Disney Plus and ESPN Plus all in one plan. Indeed. Watch live TV like Jimmy Butler. Where are you going? To cut the cord. ESPN Plus all in one plan. Indeed. Watch live TV like Jimmy Butler. Where are you going? To cut the cord.
right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much it's... Right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much at stake at the start of every morning. Making sense of it all? That's not always so easy. And that's where we come in. Good Morning America. We want you to know every morning. We're right here and we got you. Right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much at stake at the start of every morning. Making sense of it all? That's not always so easy. And that's where we come in. Good Morning America. We want you to know every morning. We're right here and we got you. We are finally here. It is Oscar weekend from inside the Dolby Theater to outside on the red carpet. The final touches are being put on the big show. That also means Jimmy Kimmel is making some final edits to his monologue. This is, by the way, Jimmy's fourth time hosting the Oscars. And just as he did the last three times, he is sitting down beforehand with our Sandy Canyon. Sandy is live in Hollywood for Jimmy's latest hosting and Sandy's last Oscars as a mm. reporter, which brings a tear or 25 to our Aww. staff. <laughs> Sandy. Thanks. Well, I have, I have to tell you, Bill and Sandra, Jimmy really brought it when we sat down. He told me that the popularity of the movies this year played a big part in his decision to come back and host. And one time he said he didn't see himself doing it, but he is back, as Bill said, for number four. Now, his wife, Molly McNearney, is one of the producers this year, and she says that Jimmy gets more calm with every one of these shows that he does. Since the dawn of time, men have been getting lost. I am so lost. Jimmy Kimmel knows how to poke fun along that fine line between respect and disrespect because he's had plenty of practice. And I'm constantly trying to figure out where that line is and the line changes depending upon who we're talking about. Jimmy, only three other guys have done this as many times as you have. I understand we have Barbie to thank for you this year. I thought, hmm, this is a good reason to host the Oscars. Should Barbie be nominated? And then it became clear that Barbie was going to be nominated, and I thought, it's nice to have something that everybody's seen to kind of build the show around. To the Oscars, man! But another hosting gig wasn't a done deal until he talked to his wife, Molly McNearney, who is one of the show's executive producers. How did you and your wife, Molly, get to a yes on this? Well, she will, she'll go along with whatever I want to do. I should say professionally. Personally, that is not true. She will not go along with whatever I want to do. But when it comes to something like this, I think she just wants to throw the kind of remind me of the negatives. Like, you, you realize this and you remember this and don't forget this and whatever. And if I say, yeah, 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 then she'll go, okay, all right, well, uh, then I'll help you with it. Does she make you funnier? Yeah, she does. She makes me funnier. She makes me think about um, things before I say them sometimes, <laughs> which is a good, a good thing to have. Um, I, uh, yeah, she does. And she herself is funny, and it's great to have um, somebody to go back and forth with at 2 o'clock in the morning. I want to end here as we close on legacy. One of the most interesting things I read is that that is the value of the Oscar show for you. Yes. That it is part of history by definition. What's in those clips, you know? To be a part of that, it means something to me. And it, it feels less disposable than what I do every single night. A thoughtful answer from a thoughtful guy. Jimmy works on the monologue right up until showtime, aiming to find that perfect mix of jokes that will work in the room. He figures if the audience laughs, that will make it more entertaining for everyone at home. Now, the third hour is when he cuts loose and comments on the event.
entertainment reporter, Joelle Gard. You load to tease your 11 o'clock report. Yeah, we've been having fun out here, haven't Great we? Great fun. Yeah, well, coming up, I'm going to tell you what the Academy is doing to reinvigorate the red carpet and bring in new viewers, younger viewers to the show. And a little hint, you know what it has to do with, don't you? Social media. You got it, Sandy. Yeah, you <laughs> Thank you, Joelle. It. We'll look for that. <laughs> for now, for Joelle Gargiulo, reporting live from Oscar's red carpet, I'm Sandy Kenyon, Channel 7 Eyewitness News, back to Bill and Sandy. You know, so interesting, you were talking about his legacy and everything else, and Sandy, this is your legacy as well. And with Joelle there with you, there is a passing of that legacy on, and uh, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I said we were giving us tears, but you know, You've, you've had a, a very good run here, and we love you, and you're still going to be with the company in many, many different forms. And, and Joelle has done a pretty good job. She's a little shy still, but she's, she's going to get over that. I know that. Yeah, she fits right, right in with right, the crazy Bill. team. Can I, right. <laughs> can I just say real quick, there is nobody better to be here with than Sandy Kenyon. Thank you. He is at a front row seat to Oscar history, and, and I'm just I'm just happy to I'm happy to be your assistant. And I have to tell you, Joelle, I've thought so many times, this is going to work. Great. Yes, <laughs> well, maybe you both stay for a while. There you go. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good time. It's all beginning. Oh, that's so sweet. That's reports from Los Angeles all weekend on Channel 7 as we count down to Hollywood's <laughs> biggest night. And you guys have heard it before, and it's still true. Channel 7 is your home for the Oscars. Our coverage begins Sunday at 1 p.m. And then at 4 with On the Red Carpet at the Oscars, followed by an early edition of World News Tonight. That's at 4.30. Then back on the red carpet at 5, the 96th Annual Academy Awards starts an hour mm -hmm. earlier at 7 p.m. Remember, you're springing ahead this weekend. After the show, stay tuned for a special episode of Abbott Elementary, followed by Eyewitness News. Then Monday morning, the fun continues at 9. Be sure to watch live with Kelly and Mark's after Oscar show. They will be live in Hollywood. That's all longer than your seven-day forecast. <laughs> <laughs> No you question. Sure, are you sure about that? No, no, you know, it depends what you're saying, I guess. Exactly. That, was a great, that was a great moment, by the way. It uh, really was. And Sandy's endorsement to, to Joe Alves was just fantastic, too. And uh, I mean, listen, just awesome stuff, right? Yep, yeah, really yep. She's a big personality. Yes, She's going to yes. fit we're in just trying to, fine. We're trying to delay talking about the rain. Is that what yeah, well, that's <laughs> exactly. So I was actually remembered to an Oscars years past when we had a really windy Oscar Sunday. And being a meteorologist, I have a generator at the house because a lot of times I'm not home during storms. So I want to make sure the family's yeah. safe. So one Oscar year, and it's going to be beautiful in L.A., no problem, partly sunny skies in 67, but we had power outages across the area during Oscar Sunday, so we had a lot of the neighborhood over to watch Oscar Sunday. I'm hoping we don't have a, a repeat of that. I think our winds are going to be somewhere in a 30 to 40 mile per hour gust on Sunday, but just be aware of that, that we could have some down trees, some scattered power outages on Oscar Sunday. So 53 degrees, our temperature right now, a south wind at about three miles an hour. Our number I think we're in the 40s here, but still not all that bad after recent days. But now we go back to storm coverage. So storm number three, this is the third and final soaker that we'll have to deal with before we have a pattern change next week. It's going to start tomorrow afternoon. It's going to go through very early Sunday morning. The brunt is tomorrow night. On average, there's an inch of rain. Could some spots get an inch and a half or two? Yes, that won't be. That's really the exception rather than the rule. But we get a good soaking ponding on area roadways tomorrow night. And again, as I talked about, the high winds behind this, maybe some gusts over 40 on Sunday. But Monday, the winds could even be stronger with some gusts close to 50 miles an hour. The extended forecast Tuesday on looks great. We've got sunshine, warmer temperatures, 50s and 60s next week. Maybe this is even 70 across interior parts of New Jersey. So clouds are working in right now. There's our storm system, which does have a connection to very heavy rain and severe weather down south. We could have a rumble of thunder here tomorrow night. Not severe, but just heavy downpours. So tomorrow morning we're dry. If you're out and about, no problems there. By lunchtime, some spotty light showers come in. It gets steadier during the afternoon and then starts to really hit another gear as we go through about 7 o'clock at night to about 1 o'clock in the morning, peaking probably around 10 o'clock tomorrow night. So that's some strong winds off the water. It's raw. It's breezy. It's very damp. It's slow to travel. This does move out after midnight. I mean, the timing's similar to our last storm. By Sunday morning, you wake up, and it's dry in most areas. There is some snow on the Catskills. Could be a coating to an inch or two. We see a little sunshine, but then things kind of deteriorate. It's 
A little sun, then mostly cloudy, a gusty rain or snow shower, kind of very volatile today. We're around 50, feels like 40s with the winds. Again, three quarters of an inch to about an inch and a half of rainfall with this system. Gusty winds with the rain, but the stronger winds are actually behind the system, gusting 30, 40 on Sunday. And then on Monday, we'll fast forward to that, some gusts could go 40, maybe even 50 miles an hour. Speaking of 40, increase in clouds, that's our temperature tonight. 30s in many of our suburbs. For tomorrow, 47, early morning dry, midday light showers. the brunt of the storm. Heavy rain, areas of flooding. The rain will taper and end late. Here's your seven day. An AccuWeather alert for the soaking. Don't forget to push the clocks forward. A gusty rain or snow shower Sunday afternoon. Big wind will go with an AccuWeather alert on Monday because those winds could be damaging. And then we just snap out of it. Near 60 Tuesday and Wednesday. More clouds on Wednesday. And then we're into the 60s Thursday and Friday like, of next week. You're like a bad dream. We snap out of it. Exactly. Let's get past the weekend. All Thank right. you, Lee. All right, Lee. Coming up on Eyewitness News at 5 o'clock. We just hit dead end after dead end. Their car totaled by an NYPD high-speed pursuit. So why is New York City still refusing to pay for the damages? Our investigative reporter, Kristen Thorne, gets some answers. And we'll explain how students will make history when they take the SATs this weekend. Under the sun. More than just the sun is shining under the sun. I'll be full young and love are pining under the sun. <gasps> then on the bust and toss action, DQ. Happy tastes good. What's up at DQ? Your choice of two sauced and tossed chicken strip baskets. That's right, DQ is serving up your favorite wing joint flavors, like savory sweet honey barbecue or rich and creamy new Parmesan garlic. Yep. That's juicy all white meat chicken strips, sauced and tossed in your choice of these wing famous flavors. <laughs> that saucy flavor can't be contained. Better hurry in and get in on the sauced and tossed action. DQ, happy tastes good. I'm getting vaccinated with Pfizer's pneumococcal pneumonia vaccine. I'm getting vaccinated with Pfizer's pneumococcal pneumonia vaccine. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Come on. I already got a pneumonia vaccine, but I'm asking about the added protection of Prevnar 20. If you're 19 or older with certain chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Prevnar 20 is approved in adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most common side effects were pain and swelling at the injection site, muscle pain, fatigue, headache, and joint pain. I want to be able to keep my plans. I don't want to risk ending up in the hospital with pneumococcal pneumonia. That's why I chose Prevnar 20. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about the Pfizer vaccine for pneumococcal pneumonia. Hey, cover girls. Plant power? It's a game changer. Introducing the ultimate plant powered mascara, Hawkeentopia. 300% extreme lush volume. Now in dramatic ultramarine black. Cleantopia Mascara Ultramarine Black from CoverGirl. We're building a better postal service. All parts working in sync to move your business forward. For more value, more reliability, and more on-time deliveries. The United States Postal Service. Built for how you business. From president to prison, the former leader of Honduras was convicted today in Manhattan on charges of drug trafficking. Juan Orlando Hernandez was accused of helping to funnel tons of cocaine into the U.S. and of taking bribes from Kingpin El Chapo. Hernandez claimed he was set up by traffickers seeking revenge for his efforts to quash their business. 
He could get life in prison when he is sentenced in June. He brags about the billions that he has, but former President Trump barely made the court's deadline to post a $91 billion bond in the E. Jean Carroll defamation case. In January... In dollars in damages as a result of the decision. Now, the bond size is larger than the damages because the district court requires a party to post 110 percent of the bond. Meanwhile, Mr. Trump continues to appeal the judge's decision. He also faces a March 25th deadline to put up more than $450 million in the civil fraud case that found he inflated the worth of his company in order to... Another indication the economy continues to grow. 275,000 jobs added in February. That's according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They released that information today. Once again, the numbers are higher than expectations. on Wall Street. They rallied earlier this morning on the positive data, but they cooled off a little later in the day. The Dow ending the week down nearly 70 points. The tech-heavy Nasdaq down 188 points, and the broad market S&P 500 down 33 and change. Still to come this evening, tragedy for a community in Yonkers. A young student hit by a car while walking to a school bus stop, where the investigation stands tonight. And we'll tell you why a promising drug to treat Alzheimer's is now getting delayed.